Back in 2007, I was a second year undergrad in my college. I used to sit in the back seat. That, that's me at the back. The professor is teaching something. I'm not understanding it. It's theoretical math or something like that. And I'm like watching TED videos at the back. And I saw this video by Jeff Han in 2007. For me, I was a second year undergraduate student. He was doing magical stuff with the computer, like moving his fingers around and manipulating this wonderful data. And back then, we didn't have iPhones or, or iPads to do this sort of touch-based interaction. This was pure magic for me. And I got fascinated. At the back, I was like, still sitting, still watching, and I thought, let's poke a friend in the front seat and call him back seat. So I called this guy back in, his name is Rahul, let's join and watch the video together. We joined and then he got like, oh, this is so awesome, like, let's call another guy. So we called another guy from the front seat who was one of the professor's favorite back then, no longer later, and we formed a team. So our team was like the underdogs of the college, we didn't have much recognition, but then we decided like, let's try to do something that Jeff Han has done. And we started a small team called Team Sparsh and we built uh, the first multi-touch table from India. Like it's like a gesture-based stuff and you, you manipulate things and we went outside the classroom. So my attendance was uh, like 2% during the entire four years, but very bad impression on professors. We went outside the classroom and we started traveling the country to various technical festivals and uh, those technical festivals we all won First prize everywhere, but the problem was that, that we didn't graduate, all of us. Our friends got their jobs, and we were like, some of us would, one of us did a startup, and I was like sitting there coding and stuff, and I realized what to do next. So one of the researchers from HP Labs, uh, Shriji, he saw my work and he said, whatever you're doing at college is great, why don't you join HP Labs and do an internship over there? I moved to Bangalore, I, I continued doing the same sort of uh, gesture-based interaction sort of stuff in Bangalore. And then I realized that this is not for me because I was working in a big company and not a part of a big system. So I didn't really uh, fit in. Bangalore is, uh, it has a lot of visually impaired people. I used to see a lot of visually impaired people and one fine day I was walking around and I don't know, I, I have a taste for good shoes. Why not, uh, I had a phone in my pocket, uh, the phone vibrates. Why not put the vibrator of the phone inside the shoe? So I ended up coming with this concept called Lechel. It was a very initial concept. So the shoe for visually impaired people, it had vibrators and proximity sensor, which would help visually impaired people to walk around. So it was a concept. So I built a couple of prototypes. This prototype, uh, I iterated it several times, showed it to a couple of blind people around Bangalore, and then what happened was it, the prototype looked like this. So it's a shoe that looks like a normal shoe, but it's not a normal shoe. It gives you a haptic feedback. It's like a poke on the sides that lets you know which direction to walk in. Visually impaired people tried it. They found it really awesome. And they said, why don't you make a product out of this? I said, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I just build stuff and keep it in, the, in, my, in my lab. And I'm happy with that. But this was really disturbing for me because a lot of people started sending these very emotional emails. They said, can I buy this pair for, for my son, for my... I have 18 sons who are uh, visually impaired and who have these sort of uh, physical disabilities. Can, can we buy it for them? Being a researcher and a tinkerer, I thought like it's not for me. But then this made me quit my job. And I met a wonderful person, Crispin Lawrence. He, was, he ended up being my business partner. So we did a startup. I moved to Hyderabad. And uh, we built Dukere Technologies to build Lechel. The shoe is called Lechel. That means take me there in Hindi. We built a company, it was a team of 16 people, and now we are manufacturing it as a product uh, which blind, visually impaired people around the world are going to use. People tried this. I felt very happy about it, that something I built is being used by people. But then I realized that uh, business is not something for me. Like, I, I'm a chronic inventor. I have to invent new things to stay alive. Like, that's me. I kept on building stuff. That took me to MIT Media Lab. So there, it, it was the right sort of environment with tinkerers, and you meet a lot of people. And I would like to share some work that I've been doing there. So it's the next phase of my life. So a ruler, a traditional ruler, a math ruler is something that you use on a day-to-day -day basis to sketch, to draw, to measure. So I did this project. So what if you reinvent the ruler? You take a regular ruler, embed a transparent display into it, and you get some magic out of it. So this is a transparent display ruler, and this is what you get. So here's a short video. You draw lines using a ruler the way you do it. But then you get to see the real-time feedback. So you're getting a physics sort of simulation right inside the ruler to see like how the ball reacts uh, if, you, if you do this. And there's something you do with projectiles. So you draw something, specify initial velocity for those of you who understand physics. And you see a real-time simulation on the paper itself.
this specific example, you draw a shape and it tells you the area. So a couple of people told me that, can we use this to cheat in the exams? <laughs> so, like, you draw something and it tells you, it gives you a real time. So the idea was to enhance the basic capability of a ruler. A ruler measures stuff. What if you enhance this uh, into uh, more ways? So recently I've been fascinated by smoke. Not smoking, but smoke. So like uh, one of the recent projects I've been doing and I've been working on it till the last night. At 4 a.m. in the morning, we were finishing up this prototype right here in the, in the conference hall. So the idea was that the pollution is all around us. It comes from the chimneys, it comes from the exhaust of the cars. And what if you can repurpose that pollution into something that we all use, ink, like everything is printed around us. So this was all done last night because I lost my baggage in the airport. So we built, we went around Cochin, sourced stuff and and how would you... So you, ge you generate soot, you collect a lot of soot and then you repurpose the suit in form of an ink. So it's a normal contraption. It captures the smoke coming out from lamp or it could be anything, cigarette, chimney, anything. And then you pump it in, it mixes a, a constant proportion of some vegetable oil and vodka. So if you mix vodka with soot, it becomes sort of ink. So everything homemade. So yeah. And then so I put this inside a small handheld printer and I use the ink diary that I get to print something. And so that's pollution on paper. Yeah, so this is ink. So I'm looking forward to improving this and the kind of statement I'm looking at is you attach this sort of thing at the rear of your car near the exhaust and what if it could capture the pollution and make some free ink for you. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting my undergraduate degree. So that's it. Thank you.